Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to the She Can Ball podcast. I'm your host, Mahi Jariwala. Today, we're joined by NCAA champion, Stanford women's basketball alumni, and the sixth overall pick in the WNBA draft, Haley Jones. You guys, Haley Jones has been a dream guest of mine for the longest time, so I want to give a huge shout out to Katie Wu for making the connection and making this interview possible. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the episode. So how are you? How is everything going with Athletes Unlimited right now? Well, I'm great. I'm really excited to be on your show. Thank you for having me. But yeah, life here in Dallas is pretty good. We have our own apartment set up here. Um, We're just heading into week two. I just got drafted to my teammate on the dream, Alicia Gray's team. So I'm excited. Um, But yeah, AU is great. It's like top level talent here and everybody's so nice. So it's like a little community that we're all highly competitive at a certain point during the day as well. So it's a fun, it's a really fun vibe. How does it kind of differ from like your day-to-day in the league? Yeah, uh, it's it's really different. Well, for starters here at AU, we redraft every week. So it's based upon where you are at the leaderboard. The top four will then redraft teams every week. Compared to in the league, you're with the same girls for the entire season. Obviously, there's trades and whatnot throughout the year. For the most part, you kind of have a phone base. Um, but I think it's really cool being here at AU because – you know, I get to play with people on the fever. I get to play with people that I've been looking up to my whole life that I never had the opportunity to really be around or people that you're mutuals on social media with, but never really gotten to talk before. And now you actually like get to know who they are, um, which has been really fun. So I think it gives you a cool opportunity to really not only like network on a professional level, but really just get to know people, understand people, um, make new friends, make new friends in the league. So it's a really cool environment. Gotcha. And I love to start these interviews by kind of going back to, you know, these big celebrities that we see on TV playing basketball, but kind of get to know their story and where they come from. So how did that kind of start for you? How did you first get into basketball? Well, shoot, not a celebrity. I wouldn't say that. But I, um, I would <laughs> argue here in the Bay Area, Haley Jones is a pretty big freaking name. So um, I will well, use it. I appreciate it. Um, but no, I'm from Santa Cruz, California. So I say I'm from the Bay, which I'm from the Monterey Bay, but I feel like that counts. It's like the same. It's all thing. the same. Yeah. Yeah. So I grew up playing every sport imaginable, ranging from gymnastics until I got too tall. I was on swim team, <laughs> soccer, junior guards, everything. Um, but my parents were the Santa Cruz High co-varsity head coaches of the women's basketball program there for wow. 15, 20 years or something like that. So I really, my brother and I just grew up being around the girls. The girls on the team were our babysitters, just grew up being in practices, driving 17 to go to all their games, whatever it was. Um, so I just kind of grew up a coach's kid being in the gym. So that's how I really found my love for basketball. And who were kind of your big, you talked about your parents, who were kind of like your biggest role models growing up? Yeah, it was definitely my parents um, were big for me. I think another one was my brother. Um, I think it's it's really, it's an interesting dynamic when you both play the same sport, like that being your main thing, having an older sibling, because there's competition, there's civil rivalries. Yeah. But I think my brother is the most supportive person in the whole world. He's my biggest fan, which I've appreciated more than he knows. Um, so I think they're obviously some of my greatest role models. But outside of that, basketball wise I grew up in love like I love to make catchings like there's pictures of me in a full fever uniform with no way. It, which is hilarious in my cul-de-sac my mom likes to bring them out every year just to embarrass me but I love to make catchings growing up um but yeah I think really my immediate family were big role models for me it's so cool that you were involved with women's basketball so early on, even like saying to Mika Catchings, like, I feel like growing up here in the Bay Area, like a lot of our idols were on the Warriors and I'm a big Steph Curry fan. The reason I started playing basketball. So I got a love for that, a lot of love for him and that as well. But like hearing that and hearing that you had all these female role models growing up is like so cool to hear. Oh, for sure. I think it's a big thing now being in the position that I am. It's like, yeah, you know, I was supposed to be Catchings, but the W isn't it wasn't what it is now. And like oh, yeah. even visibility that you see with women's college basketball, women's sports in general. But I think for me and my generation, where we're at is like, you're trying to become that representation that you didn't have when you were growing up. And so I think I grew up being around women's athletes just because my parents, but like you look around, you really didn't see that many. Like you didn't see no. them on TV. Like, you know, growing up, everybody's kind of a Warriors fan with Monte Ellis and we believe all that, but like, there wasn't really like that women's sports team to kind of get behind. 
Um, so I think it's really exciting to be where I am now and try to further that agenda. I know and the Bay Area team is just super duper exciting. Yeah. Um, I will be an incoming freshman. So I'll go to Stanford next, like in the fall. And I'm like so excited because I'll be here for that. And then All-Star Weekend will also be here um, next year. So a lot of like big things yeah. happening here. And I'm just excited for like the Bay. I feel like it's a very loyal fan base. And like the reason I started watching the Warriors in the first place was because they were the local Bay Area team. And I'm so excited for young girls to just watch the WNBA and have it just be a local Bay Area team that they get to support and enjoy. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think what you said, the Bay being loyal through the ups and the downs, like the Giants and the Warriors were not always good. <laughs> no. Ups and downs. And so I think to bring a women's sports team into this environment is really exciting with the NWSL, with the Bay Club as well, I think is really cool. Also having that be completely women backed, like with Brandy Chastain and that whole group is amazing. Um, but I think like the support that you've seen with not only Stanford, but Cal and all these other women's sports teams in the Bay that are so good, whether it's basketball or not, there's national championships being brought in by every Bay school with yeah. every season that comes along. And so I think the Bay has always supported their sports teams, but I think they've also always been behind women's sports. So I think it's a great market to bring the next W team into. 100%. And like in your high school career, I mean, two-time Gatorade player of the year, you were the number one recruit coming out of your class. Was there like a moment in whether your high school or youth career where you were not only like, oh, I could be really good at basketball, but like I could be one of, you know, the greatest or number one. And I say that because I can say that because you were the number one recruit coming out of your class. So <laughs> how did you, yeah. yeah. Um, honestly, no, there was never a moment for me. I think, uh, Growing up, I didn't think I was very good because I always played up age groups. And so like, you're constantly being humbled, you know? <laughs> and then once I did play my own age group for the first time, it was like when I was on the EYBL circuit. So I'm like, mm -hmm. dang, everybody's just like me. Like everybody's this good, whatever. Um, but I think when I realized that I could kind of make something of myself, you know, go to college, get paid for whatever, it was definitely later in my high school career, I'd already been on a USA team, whatever it was, but I never really thought of myself as that person. Um, I think my family does a great job of keeping me humble. Um, my friends as well, whenever we're out and about and somebody asks for a picture and they're like, with her, what? <laughs> she's boring. Like she's lame. Bye. And I'm like, you know, it's easy, but like, they're also my biggest fans in the same point. So yeah, I think for me, it was, I think the way I viewed basketball was never like, I don't know, I'm going to go be the greatest or I'm going to go do this and that. Like that's what was something that I was always good at. Um, but I think just coming from a very competitive family, I wanted to be the best. And so I think it was never like, oh, I want everybody to know me as the best. It was me personally. I wanted that internal validation because I think at some points I did get caught up in like, oh my gosh, what's being said on me on Twitter? What's being said about yeah. me? on this? And then it's just like, it's a downhill spiral. So like, it was really for me getting that internal invalidation that I needed for myself to like feel like I reached my potential you know not looking to other people for their opinions of myself um but yeah I think when I realized I could be good was I don't know late in the high school I was like this seems to be working out like <laughs> we're getting invited to USA camps okay keep pushing keep doing that like okay I gotta narrow down my schools whatever I think around that point in time it was kind of like okay Haley like you're you're this good now keep it pushing yeah. And then what made you decide ultimately Stanford? Yeah, I think uh, it's hard to say no, honestly, like you got in. It's <laughs> like, well, now I'm going, you know, exactly. So yeah. I think especially with basketball, you get the best of both worlds there. Right. Like I went, we won a national championship. We go to two final fours, but like at the same time, you're getting a world class education. Um, and so I think it's also my parents really instilled in me this kind of holistic mindset. And it's basketball isn't going to be forever for me, right? It's, I'm not going to play for 40 more years, but like I need a degree and the connections that I made at Stanford to get me beyond basketball and using basketball for everything that it brings me, not only like the love of the game and getting to play in the W and live out my dreams, but like getting to start broadcasting, doing my own podcast, getting to make an impact with young girls, getting to work in the community, getting to use my platform for all these different things. I think Stanford allowed me to just kind of be I don't know have my 
connections open up to a whole new world that if I went to other schools, I don't think I would have gotten those same opportunities. And it's cool to hear you say that because, you know, I finished my basketball career a couple of weeks ago now. Um, but, you know, I started playing basketball and I started this podcast because I wanted to, you know, create this resource for young girls who played basketball and basketball has kind of served as like this conduit for me um, to explore like broadcasting and journalism as well. And so I think it's just great to see, you know, people like you and just people take that step further because there's so much more to the game and there's so much more that you can do to stay involved with sports um, beyond just playing it. Yeah, I think you're completely right. I mean, um, in Atlanta, we've done a lot of work with young girls and staying in sports because that age 13 is really when girls start to drop out. And it's a big thing. I know we were looking at certain districts in Atlanta, just talking about like, oh, you know, 40% less girls in sports in high school. And it's like, what? Like, why? And so I think there's a lot of reasonings behind it. But I think a big one is just, you know, girls don't want to play. And I think that they only see it as like, there's such a specialization at such a young age these days. I played every sport imaginable until high school, just because high school is hard to do everything. Yeah. And um, so I think like I didn't specialize until then. And so I think when you do it so young, they're like, well, if I'm not the best. I don't want to do it. When in reality, you don't have to be the best in order to get the most out of sports. I think that sports can teach you so much just in terms of like, for me, not only to give me my best friends in the whole wide world, but it taught me how to interact with people from different backgrounds, people who move differently than I do, but like, we're still teammates at the end of the day and we have the same goal. So moving into the professional world that I'm now, like, you know, I may not like everybody that I come into contact with, but at the end of the day, I still need to make it shake. Like these things still need to, need to get done. And I think that even if you're not the best in your sport, like you can go the corporate track you can, you know, be a manager at your college and then use the connections of those coaches. If you make friends with the girls on the team, they're going to help you out. If you want to get into journalism, broadcasting, you want to be on the corporate side, marketing, whatever it may be, being an agent. I think that in the sports world, there's so many more opportunities than people think about. And just playing in high school, like I've learned so much from sports and like whether that's time management, like you said, learning to work with other people. Um, But I think now kind of like being done with basketball and like time management, like I feel like I'm able to manage my time very well. And I see maybe other people who haven't been able to play sports because it's tough. You put two hours of practice in there and then, you know, if you want to go up and get shots and more than that, you're tired now. And now you have to do your homework and get your stuff done and you find a way to make that happen. And so it's like when I have to do things and get podcast interviews scheduled, I'm like, bam, bam, bam. Cause like I've been doing you know. this before. Yeah. yeah. No, you're completely right. I think that time management thing, I thought I had it down girl. When you get to Stanford, it may oh my gosh there's so much going on there's basketball and just speaking from like from going through Stanford basketball let me tell you your day lift practice extra shots film oh class oh and now you're at study hall and now you're at office hours and now you have your whatever at the later night oh and I need to do my homework and I need to have recovery oh time for myself Oh, and have a social life. Like there's so much going on. And so I think just like you said, even in high school, it's a lot. Like you talk about all these different things that you're doing. And I know that you're just this well-rounded person to be able to get into Stanford. And so I think that sports definitely help you with that times management aspect. Let me tell you, freshman year, your girl did not have it down. And I definitely had to learn moving into the rest of my college career. No, that's, ins- but like going to Stanford and like playing sports, like the amount of people who have been like, oh, for basketball. And I'm like, who do you think I am? Absolutely <laughs> not. That would be, I I can't imagine that. Like, because yeah, you have to keep up with everything. And, and this is something that I'm like very curious for when I talk to like athletes that go to very top academic institutions. Like, is it sometimes you're like, man, I could have gone to like an easier school and like the school at least would be like a little bit easier because that's a big part of college. I mean, people go and they can't even like manage their time with school itself. Try being a D1 athlete on top of that. Yeah, no, you're completely right. I think that um, going to a high academic school, it's it's rigorous. It is. The course <laughs> level is in that, but I think that there's ways to make it happen. Um like working with your academic advisor, I know mine was great. And it was working through like winter is the winter quarter at Stanford is typically when we do most of our traveling with PAC 12 and whatnot. So I'm taking a lighter course load during that point in time, maybe lighter classes, whatever it may be. But then in the spring after season's over, 
oh, we're loading up. I'm not a math gal. That's when I took my math classes. I'm more of a humanities girl. So like I was able to just work out my schedule based upon those different mm-hmm. things. Um, but I think also it's like, I had to learn my freshman year. It's as hard as you make it, it because like I was procrastinating and you, you're a freshman. So you want to make all these new friends. You're like, oh, I want to do this in basketball. And so school's on the back burner. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so hard. I'm not going to make it. But then once you get a different perspective on it, you start managing out your time. It's like, oh, it really isn't that bad. It's really you doing it to yourself. Um, so I think it's really just a learning curve. Very true. So the 2021, you know, season leading up to like that championship was like a big year. Um, I watched the Arizona game. I'm curious from like your perspective, what that game was like and like what the emotions were kind of like running through your head during that, that stretch. Yeah, I mean- Kobe here in general was just crazy. And then on top of that, the tournament being in the bubble was something I would not want to do again. I would not recommend it, but we won. So like it made everything worth it. But I think honestly, like, I think I, like, if I look back on it, it is so hard to remember. I feel like I I blacked out and I was just doing it. Mm. And like, I'll watch like people, you know, they post highlights of the game and I'm like, wow, that's me. <laughs> I don't remember that. Like it was such being in a final four, being in a national championship game is such a surreal thing because it's like, that's something that you dream of doing. And so when you're Literally. actually there, it's like, holy crap, like this is really happening to me right now. <laughs> and then we, when we won, it's like a whirlwind, right? We're yeah. doing all these different stuff. Then I have interviews in the morning and we're in the locker room and you're doing all these <sighs> different things. So it didn't really sink in until like a month later. And I was like, holy crap, like we won a natty. I have a ring. Like, this is crazy, you know, but that game was crazy intense. Like we'd already played, I think that was our third time playing Arizona because played them twice during the Pac-12 season. We didn't see them in the Pac-12 tournament. So that was our third time playing a team. It is hard to beat a team three times. And I remember when we went to Arizona during the regular season, we whooped them. We did not think we were going to win like that. I remember we won by like 30. And then we played them at Stanford. It was a closer game. It was more like 10, 15. And then in the natty, got even closer. We only won by one. Mm-hmm. So, like, I think Arizona was very well coached, as always, with Adia. I think that they had superstars with Ari and Kate Reese and Sam Thomas. Um, but, I mean, they're also a really hard team to play. Like, they played very well together. Their defense is very annoying. Like, why are you full, full court pressing me 24-7? Like, can we get a break? <laughs> <laughs> which was very frustrating. Um, but I think it was a great game. I think it was low scoring, not because the offense wasn't moving like that, just because defensively both teams were locked in. Like, I think also in those high moments, like you're so hyped up for the game, like shots may not be falling, but you're trying so hard. It was just a lot going on. Um, but yeah, that game was amazing when we won. Like when Ari, we knew she was going to shoot that last shot. I think we left like three people to throw people at her. because I know it. that because last shot like, was Scary. When I tell you, I was like under the basket guarding, I think, Baptiste or something like that. And I saw Lexi, Cam, and Anna all run to her. And I'm like, so here I am guarding. <laughs> There's like four different people to go to. But like at the end of the day, no matter what team it is, like you're going to have your superstar taking the shot. And so we knew she did. Thank the Lord she missed it. And we won. And just having that dog pile was surreal. No, oh, I can imagine. Was yeah. there a reason why you decided to go straight to the league after and like not a fifth year? Because as a, yeah. you know, incoming freshman, I'm praying that Cameron stays for one more year, but you know, you just never know. So I'm trying to get some insight for that. Yeah. Um, for me, I never thought NIL was going to be a thing. Mm. My collegiate career, I didn't think it was going to impact me at all. And so I planned to go in for four, graduate and go to the league. And so having NIL was amazing, right? And I think I've been with my same agent since I signed with them in July, whatever year NIL came out. I think that was in 2021. And I just, it was just never my plan to stay for five. I got hurt my freshman year, but I didn't get a red shirt year. I I played for too long. Um, So I was just like, I'm not going to change my path, my trajectory, what I've seen myself doing just because of NIL when these deals, these endorsements are going to go with me since I signed longer term deals. They're just going to carry over with me into my W career. I felt ready. I felt like I did what I wanted to in college. Like, obviously, I would have wished to have done another Final Four. 
I would have loved to win another national championship, whatever it may be. There's things I wish happened differently, but at the end of the day, like I was just ready for the next step. Um, and so I think that, yeah, fifth years are great for a lot of people. There's different reasons why people want to stay, different reasons people want to leave. But I think for me, it was just, I planned for four. And so I was like, that was my four and I'm ready to go. I just felt prepared. And then you had two months to the WNBA. I think like the second you had your last season game, you had like two months until that first WNBA game, right? Yeah. How was that like transition and just, yeah. What did you do to like mentally kind of get yourself ready and physically in like two months um, to start playing professional basketball? Yeah, uh, it's it's definitely quick. So after uh, we lost to Ole Miss, I basically, so I took online courses my senior spring. Okay. And I did that so that I was able to go to Santa Barbara and work out with my trainer, Packy Turner. He does a pre-draft there. Okay, yeah. Day. We had him on the podcast a while ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he does a pre-draft there every year. And so he had me come down and I trained there with Aaliyah came out as well. And we trained there with him. And then also we're lifting, conditioning, doing all that with P3 sports science down there, which was really fun. Um, Got to put all the different bubble stickers on you. Like you're in 2K, (laughs) do the whole testing situation. It was really cool. Yeah. So it was very catered to you and what you need. Um, But yes, I was there. And then what else did I do? I was really there most of the time. And then I went to the draft in April. And then I came back to work out of Santa Barbara. And then I came back home for a little bit. And then I was off to Atlanta. And I got there maybe a week before training camp started, something like that, like three, no, not a week, like three, four days. And then we just started up. We had training camp, started up like end of April. And then you go through that. You have two preseason games, we played Connecticut, then we played at DC. And then we started up our season um, at Dallas. Insane. Was was it like, were you exhausted? Like, what was that like? Yeah. Um, it was, yeah, it was fire. It was, it's, it's not so much like physical fatigue. I think it's mental fatigue because like, you know, you take your rest, you're taking care of your body, all those different things. But like mentally you're, you're still taking college classes, but you're a professional now. And I went to school an hour from my home. So it's not like I was, you know, home every weekend, but it's different. I'm across the country now. There's a time change. There's different things to work with. I'm making my way in a new city. I've been to Atlanta like once before. So just like (laughs) figuring things out. Um, But I think it's really just a mental adjustment that you need to make. And then especially going to the pros, like I grew up watching 80% of the people in the W and being fangirls of them. And now I'm like, well, shoot on their colleague. Like now I got to go hoop against them. This is the scout. This is what you got to do. Now you got to scout me. It's just a different mindset to take on. Um, but I think being drafted to Atlanta was is the perfect place for me. Was there like a mental kind of transition? I feel like, you know, there's always like big transitions, whether that's middle school to high school, high school to college. But when you make that pro jump, like this becomes your job. Yeah. And is was there kind of something mental where you kind of had to like lock in and be like, I'm still just playing the game that I've played for so long? For sure. I think once it becomes a job, it's it's different because you're playing for the love of the game, but it's also like your career and you need to pay your bills and like have a livelihood. There's no longer that safety net of being a collegiate athlete. Like this is now your job. And so making that mental adjustment of like, you get so caught up in the grind of it. And I think in college you get caught up in the grind, but at the same time, like you're on a college campus, like there's so many different outlets to go do whatever. But like, once you're a pro, it's this like taking care of your body, eating right is your job. So it's like, going to the grocery store, you have to plan out your meals, what you're eating, thinking about your rest. Okay, sure. I'm only in the gym from nine to one every day. We have our practice slot, extra shots, lift, all done that block. So it's like figuring out how to not burn out and still enjoying what you do while understanding that this is your livelihood. I think it's, it's just a a balancing act that kind of took place for me. My, my first month out was really just like, I have so much free time. Like and I'm not a couch potato. So like, how do I not be a busybody, but like find that balance for what's going to work for me. And then you also been keeping up with your podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been obsessed with it. Sometimes I hoop. 
what you know how did that come about and what has it just been like to kind of tap into journalism and broadcasting oh I appreciate that you're a fan you have a new fan of me I'm about to go listen to all your episodes (laughs) um but yeah sometimes I hoop it came about I want to say was it my senior year yeah my senior fall um I've always been interested in broadcasting. I chose communication at Stanford really so I could make it focus on journalism. Uh, and so it's always been something I wanted to get into. I never saw podcasting being the way to get into that. And mm-hmm. so my agents called me and were like, oh, Players Tribune reached out. They want you to host a podcast. And I was like, me? Huh? <laughs> like, wow, no way. So like we get on the call. Sometimes I Hoop has been my Instagram bio for years. And so they were like, we love it. We think that that's your brand, like talking about, because I always talk about being more than an athlete, being a whole person, all these different things. So it just kind of matched up. Um, And so it came about, we started doing it, had a little photo shoot, got our cover picture. It's going to be revamped soon, which is very exciting. I talked for that. But it was, it was great. We had my first episode with Aaliyah, which was like really a good one for me with someone I'm so comfortable with to be able to like, work on asking questions as you know it takes a while to get into it like you don't want to (laughs) just ask questions and it just be a question and answer nobody wants to listen to that like you're not being interviewed it's a conversation so it's finding those different ways to do it and I feel like it at first for me when I didn't know the person I was like oh crap how am I gonna do this I don't know them I don't know anything (laughs) about them so it's like the research that goes behind it and all these different questions and like working with my producing team they're amazing and so I think it's it's really a team effort, but it's been so cool. We're on season two right now. We're kind of doing the college season. And then once W starts back up, we'll get more into the W players, but uh, it's been really fun. And it's so cool to listen. And as you said, like, you know, there's a lot of like people that you know that you've played against and it's just fun to hear these like conversations that, you know, just would happen between two friends playing college basketball. Um, I remember yeah. listening to like my favorite episode is the Caitlin Clark episode. And it's just so cool uh-huh. to hear you guys just like chat it up. Um, because it's different than say, if I were to, you know, have a conversation with someone than like two friends kind of just chatting it up on the pod. So I love that about it. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. My last question for you is what advice do you have for young girls looking to pursue basketball or even pursue journalism or sports journalism in any sense? Um, just what advice do you have for young girls that are aspiring to do big things like you've done? Yeah. Oh, great question. Finish it off. Oh gosh, let me think. Okay, I feel like some of the best best advice from my mom, obviously, I learned everything from my mom. Um, what she always instilled in my brother and I is to it's it starts with being unapologetically yourself, right? Be you. There's something, and I think something I had to continue to learn as I moved to the W was like, you're here for a reason because something about you set you apart from everybody else, right? And then beyond that, my mom always talked about like never comparing your journey to somebody else's. And so what makes you you makes you special. And so comparison is always the thief of joy for me, right? Oh, oh, I won this award. Oh, I got this grand on the test. I looked somebody over there and I'm like, oh, well, they're doing this and that and they just took a vacation and this and that. And oh my gosh, my life yeah. isn't comparing. Like, <laughs> why am I not like them? It's whatever. And so I think for me, it's, it's a mix of being you and, you know, don't comparing your journey to somebody else's. Everybody's going through their same struggles. You're not in it alone. Like there's all these, all these different things to it. And then I think the last piece of that is just like, when it comes to not comparing yourself to others and like looking for that external validation that we talked about earlier, for me, it's been a lot of like, understanding what voices to listen to. And so I think as a young woman, there's going to be a lot of different opinions that are put on you by different people who don't know who you are, have never had a conversation with you, have all these different opinions on how you should live your life. But like at the end of the day, the people's voices that matter are the ones that like know you, your family, your friends, like you need to listen to those people to lift you up and to humble you at the same time. (laughs) It's a balance. But yeah. I think that like those three things are kind of my main pieces of advice to young girls, young whoever listening to this, moving through the career that you want to get into is just like, be yourself, be you, don't compare your journey to anybody else's and keep like, keep your circle small, keep the ones that you close, the ones that you trust, the ones that 
the ones that really know you, those are the opinions that you want to like impact the way that you see yourself. I love that you said that. So as you know, I got to talk to Steph Curry a few months ago and he was like a big idol for me. And one thing that he said was like, you know, don't, he was like, run your own race. And like, it's easy to kind of compare yourself to your left and your right. But like, you know, you do you and know that like what's meant for you is what's meant for you. And I think, you know, college application process was a lot because I feel like it's kind of similar to recruiting, but it's like, it's stuck into like one chunk of time and you have to write these essays that like, are supposed to encapsulate who you are as a person. And there was a lot during basketball season with school, there's a lot of tears, oh. a lot of just it not is so much. It yes. is so you're right. And so there was a lot going on, but that was like something and I a quote that I kind of like kept with me of like, you know, you go through this like, oh, why me, why me? But then you get in, you're like, why me? Why, yeah. why me? And so I I love that. That's something that I keep very dear and near to my heart. So I agree with that. Oh yeah, no. And I know that Stanford application. Oh my God. I remember when I was applying, I don't know if the same question that, that you had, but it was, there were nine different essays on top of the app, right? Mm -hmm. But I remember the one essay that got me the most was the shortest one. And it said five words to describe you. And so I'm like, oh my God, what five words encapsulate everything about me? I'm like on thesaurus.com. Because at first I'm writing down, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm funny. No, humorous. And I'm like, oh, hard worker, diligent, you know, there like, you like yeah. how do I encapsulate everything about me into five words? Stanford app, not a fan. That thing is <laughs> cool. And I feel like everybody that applies to Stanford is like, you know, carrying cancer. And I know yeah. the guy next to me in my freshman dorm, <laughs> by the way, when you have your freshman dorm or a four class dorm, whichever one you stay in and you go to that like mixer on the first night, when I tell you, I was talking to this one guy, he was like, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm figuring out, should I sell my tech to Google and this and that? I'm like, huh? And he's like, so Haley, what do you do? I'm like, so I'm on the basketball team. And he's like, oh my God, that's so cool. I'm like, bro, shut up. You're saying <laughs> Google right now. This one girl like made her own 3D printer and I'm like, okay, but you know, run your own race. <laughs> you can't compare to others. Even though in times like that, it's like, damn, I'm throwing a ball in a hoop. Shoot. <laughs> I know I definitely I feel like even after I got in I was like you actually gotta be like smart because I feel like I'm definitely very like street smart and like yeah. I can you know set up a you know interview and like whatnot but like I feel like I'm not necessarily as book smart so I'm definitely gonna have no. to lock in and, and get are. that going you are because this is a conversation I had with some of my fellow Stanford classmates okay. literally the other day and we were t- talking about how like when you're at Stanford you have imposter syndrome because like you're looking around and everybody is amazing. And it's like, where do I fit in? Yeah. But then when you actually like talk to them after the class or whatever like that, they're thinking the same thing. Like, I know I would be in some discussion, like breakouts or whatever. And somebody says something so intelligent. And I'm like, wow, I would have never come up with that. And then I say something and then they, they say the same thing to me mm-hmm. after class. And I'm like, okay, we're here. We're yeah. Here. I think everybody's going through the same thing. So you're going to, you're going to be great. You'll be fine. I know that's something I'm going to try to you know keep in my mind but I do think that it will definitely be tough at the beginning when I I remember one girl I met online she has like her own like fashion company and like offset wears her clothes and I was like whoa you're like that's cool yeah Yeah. that's awesome thank you so much again um I appreciate your time this has been great of course and if you need anything like if you go into Stanford if you want I don't know to be a manager you need a number or getting in the journalism world you have my number now so I got you I'm a resource and not one of those resources that you like never text I'm a resource if you need me for anything thank you you are so sweet